Welcome everybody. My name is Teresa Opeka with Carolina Journal and in the studio today we have Luke Farley. He is running for Commissioner of Labor on the Republican ticket. Welcome Luke. Thanks so much for joining yeah, us today. Yeah, Teresa, thanks for having me and thanks for your interest in this race. Absolutely, absolutely. We, we want to get all the information out to all the voters and, and, and you know, ask different questions and get to know you a little bit better. So we're going to start that right off the bat get to know you a little bit better. Um, so tell, tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, where you grew up, um, family, things of that nature. Sure. Um, so I'm new to politics first. Sure. Uh, never been in politics before, never run for office, been in the private sector the last 14 years, small business lawyer representing uh, different types of small businesses. Grew up in Onslow County, okay. uh, went off to Carolina, Wake Forest. I've uh, been practicing law here in Raleigh the last 14 years, met my wife. Uh, so shortly after moving to Raleigh, been married 10 years. I got two young sons, seven, two and a half, and another one coming August 3rd. So we, call, we have a campaign baby coming. <laughs> and uh, Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. We, we joke that, uh, you know, everything's got to have a slogan. So this is number three on the third, coming <laughs> August 3rd. So that's the baby's campaign slogan. <laughs> Starting early. That's right. Get them going early. That's right. Starting early, yeah. Yeah, so you said you've been a lawyer for 13 years? Yes, that's right. Uh, actually, almost 14, yeah. Okay. And what do you focus on? What is your background? So my practice is working with small businesses, most of them in the construction industry, helping them uh, with their contracts, you know, if there are disputes. Uh, but the most important thing has been helping them with uh, complying with the OSHA regulations. You know, a big part of what the Labor Commissioner does is enforcement of our OSHA workplace safety regulations. In fact, the most important thing that the Labor Commissioner does is keep our working men and women safe and healthy. And so I've got that real world professional experience, uh, not political experience necessarily, but that real world professional experience uh, to go in and get the job done. Yeah, yeah. Now, have you held any other offices, like civic offices? So I've served on a couple of boards over the years. Uh, the North Carolina Human Relations Commission, I was appointed to that. I uh, served on the Durham County Board of Elections. But this is my first run for elective office. But the thing is, is that Labor Commissioner is a, it's a technical and regulatory position. And so the best way you can be prepared for that is having worked with the regulations, not necessarily holding office. And so that's why this professional experience I've got um, is really going to help get the job done. Yeah. So why did you decide to run for this office? The thing that really pushed me to do it is the idea that, you know, for me, North Carolina has been a place of endless opportunities. You know, get a great education, have a career, own a home, start a family, all the things that are part of the American dream, and I'd call it the North Carolina dream too. And I want to be sure it stays that way. You know, I've got, as I said, two young sons, another baby coming. I want North Carolina to be as great for them as it has been for me. I want them to have the same opportunities. And I'm keenly aware of the fact that there's a lot of competition out there. North Carolina is competing with other states and other countries uh, for economic prosperity. And so I want to be sure that I play my part to keep North Carolina great for the next generation. Yeah, so um, in that vein, you have something in common with uh, the Republican candidate for Lieutenant Governor, Hal Weatherman, about the trades and vocational uh, jobs. Um, why is that important? Why do you think that uh, some of the focus should be focused, not just maybe on college, but getting a vocational or a trades uh, degree? I'm a huge proponent of vocational and technical education. I mean, I firmly believe that a four-year college degree is not the only path to success. In fact, the construction industry makes more millionaires than any other industry out there. And so we need to be sure people understand that there are multiple paths to success in life. And we need to reach them early. That's one of the key things that we're finding that, you know, by the time somebody gets to later in their high school career, they've sort of made up their mind about what path that they want to take. Uh, but we need to reach younger people uh, earlier in their school careers and say, listen, have you thought about uh, plumbing, HVAC, electrical, the kinds of things that um, you can move up quickly and build a great career for yourself? Okay, okay. Now, earlier in the year after you won, the North Carolina Chamber had some some words saying they were a little bit doubtful. They were saying um, you were, quote, a far-right candidate who's too many campaign platforms for banning vaccine requirements for employees and making elevators great again. But they've uh, they've changed their tune, haven't they? Yeah, I think the chamber um, was a little off the mark there, but I think they've seen that that was off the mark. As I'm getting out there and meeting people, folks understand that I'm here to make North Carolina the safest place to work and the best place to do business. That is what this campaign is about. 
Um, we want workers to be safe and protected. Uh, we want you to go home at the end of the workday, but then the next morning to have a fantastic job to go to. And that's the message we're getting out there, and I think that message is being picked up and it's resonating with people. Yeah. Talk about, um, you mentioned in, on your website, the Biden's, uh, Biden's heat stress regulation. Why, what is it and why is that important? So it's a new regulation that's being proposed by the Biden administration as part of an OSHA workplace safety regulation uh, that would govern work in the heat. Uh, but the problem is it's going to be complex and burdensome and very expensive to implement. Now, I'm not saying, folks, uh, that we need to turn a blind eye to, to heat stress. Working in the heat can be dangerous, but it's also a common sense problem, and we already have the legal tools on the books to deal with it. There are already laws that are being enforced that protect workers from the heat. The question is, do we need a new fat stack of regulations for employers to implement? And there's stuff in it, in the proposed regulation, that just doesn't meet common sense. You know, some of these regulations are supposed to kick in as low as 76 degrees. Now, good luck trying to get any work done in North Carolina from April to October uh, if the triggers are 76 degrees. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you've made um, your ticket up strong opinions about anybody being forced to join a union, take a COVID vaccine. You still hold true to those viewpoints? Yes, I yeah. I'm right to work and I'm opposed to workers being forced to take vaccines to keep their job, the COVID vaccine. Right, right. Okay. Um, touched on it a lot, but just want to ask you in general, why are you qualified for this position? It's by my background in the private sector. You know, I have found that the most successful people in government aren't people who've spent careers in government. It's people who've picked up relevant skills and experience outside in the private sector who understand how business works, who understand how jobs are created, and then bring that experience into the government. And that is exactly where I am. Like I say, this is a technical and regulatory position. Um, and it's a position where you get that experience in the private sector. You know, I have been both an employer and an employee. I've signed the front and the back of a paycheck. I've needed a job and I've helped create jobs. And so that's the experience we need in the labor commissioner's position. Now, if you are elected, what would your first order of business be? What do you like, any, like, any deficiencies you're seeing in the department right now? I wouldn't call it a deficiency, but our top priority is making sure the vacancies within the Labor Department are staffed. You know, there are vacancies within the safety inspectors and the elevator inspectors. And my first order of business is to make sure that the positions that have been allocated to the department by the General Assembly are filled. And that's going to involve looking at um, salaries, benefits, make sure they're competitive with the market, uh, and do the kinds of things we need to do to be sure people want to come work at the department and stay working at the department. Uh, last question for you. Why should someone vote for you over your opponent in the general election? because I'm a thousand percent committed to making sure North Carolina is the safest place to work and the best place to do business. I understand that we need a balanced approach to regulation in this state, right? Our prosperity is driven by our workforce and our small businesses. It's the businesses that create the jobs uh, and it's the workers that keep the businesses running. And so we need a balanced approach if we want to protect jobs. I truly believe that if you care about workers, you care about their jobs too. And the best way to protect workers is through common sense regulation that gives us a strong economy. Because when we have a strong economy, workers are in demand. And when workers are in demand, they control their own destiny. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. I mean, Luke Farley, uh, Commissioner of Labor candidate on the Republican ticket in the general election. Thank you so much for coming here today. Teresa, thanks so much. Appreciate it.